Okay, perfect. I think we can, I'll give them the 30 seconds. <laughs> um, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about Lodestar for anyone who's not familiar. Um, we are the fee experts. This is kind of how we talk about ourselves and, and how we view ourselves um, and really what drives us as a company. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, we are a small business. Um, we're currently at 15 employees, but we do have the largest uh, dedicated team to fees in the industry. Um, so I always like to highlight that. Um, and then we were founded nine years ago. It's going to be 10 years in August. Um, so we're really excited to celebrate that this year. And in 2022, we saw one cure for every 22,000 quotes that came out of our system. So a huge thanks to our data team for that, um, along with Kelsey's team managing all of our title agent providers. Um, our average time savings is eight minutes per file um, compared to a manual or templated process. And then we are an independent fee database as previously referenced. Our data team is absolutely wonderful. and We do manage everything in-house. Um, with the exception of property taxes, um, but we'll be really diving into what we manage in-house here today. Um, and last year we were honored um, on the Inc. 5000 list at spot 1,231. Um, a little bit about uh, what loan types we support. This is the full list. So if you see something on here that you don't, if you're a current client, you don't currently have this set up, we can set this up for you. Um, we've added some new loan types. We're really excited about these. Um, and then we also, I'm going to scroll on to all the fees we guarantee. Um, so this is our title policy, state sales tax, all of that loveliness, agent fees, along with recording fees, transfer taxes, intangible taxes, um, all of that. We also support appraisals, real estate taxes, land survey, water survey, past septic, flood, um, and I believe there's a few more we've added since I've made these slides um, because we really are expanding our additional services um, fees. So that's something we can also add to your environment if you don't have any of these. Um, perfect. Well, I'm going to go ahead, hand it over to Kelsey to kind of walk through Encompass and what customizations we can make. Awesome. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Um, I definitely recognize a lot of you all that are attending. Um, so as Elena mentioned, um, of course, I'm going to run through a demo, but the point of running through this demo is to point out um, all of the customizations that uh, we can do within Lodestar. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And of course, if anyone has any questions along the way, you can pop them in the chat um, and I can go ahead and answer them. So for this example, I'm going to be in Florida. Um, again, I know some of you aren't in Florida or um, or, or all over the <laughs> the um, nation. So if you have specific questions to your region or area, again, please feel free to ask that as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and access um, the Lodestar integration. I'm going to go ahead and click order additional services. I'm going to go ahead and click submit. And of course, you will see the services view tab pop open. So this is where our customization can start. Um, so as mentioned, I'm doing a purchase in Florida. Um, I'm going to start with the recording fee section. So as many of you guys are aware, this is our recording fee section. Um, we try to automate the um, recording docs that are needed based on the state, the county, the transaction type. Um, we by default will um, update the page count again with what's most common in that state or county. Um, in terms of customization, we can um, obviously, of course, you guys are manually able to update these page count numbers, but we are able to change the default for you as if needed. Um, our main goal when it when I think of customization here is making it easier for the user um, in terms of them not having to think as much 
um, to make that ultimate decision. Um, minimizing the clicks is definitely my main goal when someone uses Lodestar. I'm all about minimizing the clicks. Um, so that's, I'm going to keep going back to that when I refer to customizations. Um, so with that being said, uh, of course here we can automatically default recording page counts if needed. Um, we can even go down to turning off the ability for the user to, um, turn off or turn on, or I would say turn off recording fees. Um, if you don't want the user to have the ability to update anything um, on the calculator, that is also a, a choice as well. Um, and again, down here, so um, in terms, again, with customization, we have the ability to pull from custom fields within Encompass. So again, minimizing the number of clicks the user has to take, um, we can pull from a custom field within your form in terms of uh, if a power of attorney is needed. So we can pull from a string, um, a checkbox. Again, whatever custom field you set up, um, essentially we can pull from that into the Lodestar integration. And instead of the user having to click um, that they need a power of attorney, we will automatically turn it on if that field, if that custom field within Encompass is populated correctly. Okay, um, moving up. So again, here, uh, we automatically pull in everything from the loan file. Um, we have these questions here as well. Uh, again, these just help us um, make sure that you all are getting the most accurate quote. Um, of course, these questions can affect um, the transfer tax amounts, recording fees amounts, title premium amounts. Um, so in terms of customization there, um, we're able to essentially hide questions. If you don't want to see them, we can have them automatically checked and hidden. So you don't want the user to have the ability to uncheck and see them. Um, in some cases, uh, we can add um, questions as well. So for example, um, it's pretty common for a lot of our lender clients to have a question um, that says uh, buyer to pay all seller taxes um, for all states. So that is an option as well. That way you give the user the ability to um, push all of the transfer taxes to the buyer side versus having them split or 100% on seller. Again, of course, depending on what state you're in. Um, so with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose my title agent. Um, one feature that is newer that I'm not sure a lot of the attendees are aware of is we do have the ability to automatically select a title agent based on the state, based on the county, based on the transaction type. That way, again, going back to minimizing the number of clicks, that way the user doesn't have to choose if you only have, let's say, one title agent for that state or county. So for example, um, let's say, hey, Kelsey, in Florida, I only want priority title to be an option um, for Florida purchases. Um, it will automatically populate. So again, the user doesn't have to click and choose. Um, but if uh, you still want to give the user the ability to choose a different title agent with still populating a choice, um, of course, they are able to pick, they are able to click that drop down and pick a new one. Um, again, that just saves the number of clicks that the user needs to take. Um, again, that's a newer feature. Um, great. So um, I'm going to go ahead and click calculate here. All righty. Um, as most of you are aware, of course, um, oh, you know what, actually, I want to go back really quickly before I jump into that. Um, I know a lot of you all are in the um, West, Northwest regions. Um, in terms of custom, custom, Ability, we're able to add a um, escrow agent drop down here as well. Um, so, of 
course, you know, in California, Washington, Oregon, um, sometimes the SRO and title companies are different from one another. So we do have the ability to customize choosing uh, your title agent and then your escrow agent as well. Um, and then of course, I'll get into the, um, the way you can customize those within the SSPL and all of that. Um, so I did wanna mention that of course. Um, Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and click calculate. Okay, um, in terms of customizations within the closing cost details, um, we are able to populate um, specific fees in section B. Um, again, you just have to let us know what you wanna see in section B. Um, in terms of other customizations, of course, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of um, custom fee names. If you have custom fee names, if you use Maven standard fee names, we can do that as well. Um, again, speaking to the West and Northwest, um, we will um, we can split the escrow fee 50-50. Um, uh, that's usually what we see a lot of in the North west in the west um of course again customizability if you do not want that split we can um you know quote the full amount which will of course be 100 percent on the buyer side um so lots of customization in terms of section c fees um of course we'll talk more about that within the 2015 um moving to section e um here, uh, like I mentioned before, we're able to, so by default, we will quote the transfer taxes 100% on the buyer, 50-50, 100% on the seller. Again, what's based on what's most common in that state. Um, in terms of customizations there, if you say, hey, Kelsey, we want to push all transfer taxes on the buyer side 100%, we can customize that. Um, as I mentioned, we can add a checkbox. So you give your user the ability to um, update that just based on what the contract says. Um, so um, there's a lot of customability there. Um, also, we'll get more into this when I jump into the 2015, but we're able to customize how you want to see the fee, the transfer tax fee names. Um, of course, making sure they're compliant with, with your Maven. Um, also with recording fees, same thing there in terms of um, buyer seller, uh, fee name as well, and, and essentially how you want to see them and where you want to see them within the 2015. And then lastly, um, the owners and lenders. So first thing that comes to mind again, West and Northwest, um, if you want to quote the owners 100% um, on the seller, because that is what's most common in that state, we can do that. By default, um, for the owners and lenders policies, we quoted 100% on the borrower side unless otherwise. Um, so again, we can put it on the seller side. Um, of course, by default, we disclose using TRID. Um, we've seen a lot. We've seen some people want to use the old way. I use air quotations. Um, that is, of course, you know, quoting the full. We can, of course, do that as well. Um, you just need to let us know. Again, it's just how you all want to see it and how your users are used to seeing it. Um, so yes, that is kind of the gist of customization there. Um, we have a lot more within the 2015. So that's, that's going to be our bread and butter there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and export this to Encompass. And while she does that, does anyone have any questions on the last section? I know Kels I'm going to give Kelsey a talking break here for a second because <laughs> I'm so someone is typing. I love that. And again, it can be questions can be based on your region. It doesn't have to, of course, be based on Florida, whatever you guys prefer. 
We're also not covering our additional services or our appraisal here today because we really want to talk about the bulk of our business, um, but we do have some of that. If it's for, okay, for a service title agent, if it's defaulted to one title company, can users still choose another from the drop down? Yep. Yeah, they can. Um, it does not turn off the ability to choose another service provider. So, of course, yep, we, we can still default one and they can click like they're used to click that drop down and select a new one if they want. Perfect. Um, or again, for customizability, if, if you don't want the user to have the ability to choose, we can do that as well. So again, it's whatever you prefer. Um, awesome. All righty. So I'm sure a lot of you are well aware of um, a lot of the customizations here. So of course, we're able to populate specific fees into specific lines or fields. Um, as well as fee names. Um, we can even go down to the pay to. So of course, if you have an affiliate, we can mark it as A. Um, by default, of course, we mark it as paid to other. Um, same with APR versus non-APR. Um, we follow Mavens. Um, so I think that's definitely uh, very well known there. Um, also we can customize if you want to see the service provider versus if you don't want to see it within the 1100 section. Um, also, uh, for the owners and lenders, for example, if you are in the Northwest or West and you quote it, the owners on the seller side, we can customize if you want to see it um, versus if you don't want to see it here. Um, we can also customize if you want to see the underwriter here. Um, I'm just going to open up a fee detail very quickly. Um, so within the fee details, um, we can customize essentially what you want to see here, of course, um, in terms of the borrower can shop, did shop, impacts APR. Um, we can get into seller obligated here in a little bit. Um, us also, for example, if you want us to start quoting all of your fees on 1102D and down, so essentially you want us to skip that top part, we can do that as well. Okay, getting down to the 1200 section. So um, first off, right off the bat, you can see here I, um, I wanted to break out the intangible tax. So by default, we will bundle the transfer taxes and recording fees into their respective lines. Um, but we can essentially break out any and all into whatever lines you prefer. Um, also, if you want the county to show up um, as the payee instead of the itemized out, the itemized breakdown of the fees, we can do that as well. Um, and then of course paid to that's customizable. Um, so a lot of customization here also in terms of changing the names to mat to match your Maven, um, even down to the space. I know that definitely sets off, um, a lot of errors. So, um, that's something we can do as well. Um, any questions so far? Just want to make sure. Um, oh, also, we have the ability to turn off the title prefix. Uh, uh, any, I know I'm pointing out very specific nitpicky things here, but um, I always like to say that's, that's kind of our bread and butter is we are extremely nitpicky. Um, our main goal here is once the fees have been exported back into, um, the 2015 from Lodestar, 
we don't want the user to have to change anything here. Um, so again, um, we can get nitpicky. Of course, all of these customizations can also be based on state. So if you want to see um, something specific in Oregon and something else specific in California, that of course is an option as well. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, I'm not seeing any questions in the drop down right now. So we can hop into the, I was going to say the SSPL and any customizations we can make in the e-folder. Yep. Yep. We'll definitely talk about SSPL. Okay. I just want to confirm I've talked about everything. Oh, also one thing I do want to mention is once the, of course, you all are able to apply your template and then run Lodestar and we will only touch essentially what you want us to touch. But of course, we will um, override um, any current fees within the 1100 and 1200 sections. Um, but if you don't want us to clear something, um, even down to the line, even down to, let's say, excuse me, you don't want us to clear the paid to fields. Um, that is a possibility in terms of customization. Um, so that is a newer feature-ish. Um, so you can say clear everything or you can say, hey, I only want the fee names and fee amounts cleared. Again, it's, it's personal preference, um, but that is an option. Okay, so um, the SSPL. Um, so we have the ability to, um, oh, come on. we have the ability to, uh, customize what you want to see here in terms of, um, fee descriptions and amount. If you only want to see the fee descriptions, we can quote those or populate those. If you don't want to see the fee amounts, of course, that's an option as well. By default, we quote everything. Um, also, we have the ability to select the specific line for your service category. Um, so uh, one thing I did want to mention in terms of an escrow company or title company, we have the ability to quote um, essentially both categories. Um, and, and we also, this is a new feature, we have the ability to change the service category name um, based on how you want to see it. Um, okay. Um, uh, I can read that. Okay. Um, I see that settlement or closing fee is entered by Lodestar under 1101, but when we don't use Lodestar, our staff for closing fee under 1102, where it says closing fee. Uh, yep. So, what the difference is. Yeah. That just seems like a mapping, um, issue that we can fix on our end. So, um, essentially when you run Lodestar, we say our system is saying, okay, enter it under 1101, but it sounds like you're mapping, you have it mapped to 1102. So it's essentially just Lodestar switching it from 1101 to 1102. I will make note of that um, and we can make sure that is updated. Yep. Yeah. So by just so everyone is aware, by default, we don't use these fields um, like I know Encompass does. Essentially, we'll just start it from the top and use alphabetical order all the way down. So that's just something we kind of have to flip on, which is easy on our, our end. So um, and I can definitely make sure we make that change for you and we can we can chat about that. All righty. Back to the SSPL. Perfect. Thanks. Um, so again, in terms of the title and escrow companies, we have the ability to split those out. And so, of course, they will split the escrow fees and the title fees within the fee section. Um, we can change the service category name. Um, so for example, I've seen in the past, some people call it just escrow and some people call it escrow company, just little details like that. Um, so that is an option as well. Um, and then lastly, with the
the E folder. Um, so of course we will automatically quote the um, Lodestar um, PDF here. Um, and then of course, if you rerun Lodestar again, you will, all of the um, quotes will add in chronological order. They will not disappear. Um, we are currently in the working stages of being able to update the name. Um, the reason that we have not been able to is solely because Encompass just hasn't given us access to um, be able to edit the the document view essentially in in the Encompass e folder. So um, that should be enabled within the next month or so. Um, so again, I'm referring to changing the name of the um, document here. Alrighty. Um, let me make sure okay. I did not forget anything else. Does anyone have any questions about anything and everything? Yeah. Now's your time. Kelsey's here. We've got her trapped. <laughs> if you're not sure that you can do it, you can ask and, and I can tell you if we can, of course. Um, and I do want to know all of these customizations are available on our enterprise level. So if you are a client and Kelsey is your rep, uh, you can reach out to her or support directly to make any of these modifications at support at Ella Software Solutions. And if you're on our horizon level or connect versions, please let us know and we'd love to um, talk about getting you on enterprise. Um, okay, from Denise, is updating the SSFPL automatic or do we need two special requests? Um, if you, uh, you would need to tell me how you want to see it. Um, so in terms of like changing a line or how you want to see the fee descriptions or fee amounts. So essentially you would just have to tell me and I would update it. Um, do you have any plans to get on partner connect? I can see us using automation to order Lodestar. I can answer that one. Um, we do have plans. Um, currently we are waiting on Encompass, um, for Partner Connect specifically. We do have, uh, we're currently have some clients, um, that are beta testing the LO Connect portal for us. So we do have a live integration there. Um, and if you are a client and interested in getting access to that, please let us know. Um, but yes, the goal is to be in Partner Connect and have some additional capacity there, um, because we do see the value of having uh, automation to order Lodestar um, based off of key indicators in the file. Someone is typing. <laughs> oh, I think it was me. I was just answering. Didn't... Oh, perfect. Awesome. And we can also, um, any questions as well that come up afterwards, um, we're happy to connect. Awesome. Um, and I did put up here as well, if you are interested in mortgage uh, conversations, we do have a podcast that we release every Thursday. So if you click there up top, you can listen on YouTube. Um, but we do also, we're also in Spotify and Apple podcasts, if you prefer an audio only version. Um, Elena, I do want to mention something again. So I mentioned this way at the beginning that we do have the ability to pull from custom fields, um, any field that starts with uh, CX. Um, and that's something that's pretty common uh, for our clients. Again, we can pull um, so uh, the user doesn't have to click one of our check boxes. Um, of course, I can't think of examples now, but if you are thinking in terms of making the workflow easier. Um, we can definitely pull from custom fields. So if there's a thought you have in mind of like, hey, can you do this? Of course, let me know. Um, and I can tell you if we can or not. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone so much for joining us today. This has been a really great session. We'll definitely have Another one of these, um, just to, uh, so if you have team members that you wish would have this, we'll also have this recording available um, on our YouTube channel as well, um, probably within a day or so. 
Um, so we'll be sending that out um, to all attendees as well as uh, putting that on uh, some other places. So please follow us. We put out a lot of content um, and we always try to make it educational for you guys. Um, so thanks all. Thank you everyone for coming and we hope to see you again soon. Thanks guys.